All right, welcome back everyone to another video presentation. So this is a rock outcropping, a feature of a little pocket valley at the north end of the Stansbury mountain range. This is called Tempe Valley. And this rock outcropping had kind of a ominous look to it. Maybe it was the cloudy afternoon too, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it inspired some ideas in me. I hiked up to where I could photograph it and uh, do a painting of it back in the studio. So as you can see, I actually began this painting and I'm midway through the process before I'm sharing anything with you publicly. I, I started this painting out as a demo for a class of mine and uh, now I'm finishing up and publishing it on YouTube. So this painting started as an acrylic. In the upper right, where you see that very light blue, where you see the, the pastel orange in the sky, and then the yellow tones of the, of the ground, that was actually done in a thin, transparent wash of acrylic. And then I'm coming over the top with watercolor. That may seem counterintuitive, but that can be done as long as the acrylic is not thick and heavy and destroys the ability of the paper to absorb some degree of paint. You can paint with watercolor over the top of it. Learned that a few years ago and now I'm employing it in some of my paintings once in a while. The nice thing about that process is that you never have to worry about what you paint underneath being reconstituted by your working back and forth with your brush once it's dry. It's dry. So I have slightly exaggerated the size of that monolithic uh, bit of uh, limestone outcropping. I'm just enjoying what the um, just kind of the ominous look and feel of it, the nature of it. I'm just kind of having fun with that. As a matter of fact, I joke that this is uh, that this is Weathertop, <laughs> the place where the Nazgul King stabbed Frodo. But So um, <clears throat> I'm just building down is what I'm doing. Starting out very lightly and as I'm working with transparent watercolor, I don't have white. The only white I have is the white of the paper. And so that's what I need to preserve if I'm going to preserve anything. So. Uh, as I'm painting successive layers of paint, of paint, I'm building down. And of course, in that building down process, things get darker and darker. Now, there will be a bit of lift out work that will take place in places. But um, for me, it's, it's just the darkness of everything that I really got into with this particular piece. Now, on that um, ridge line off to the left, you saw me lay in some blue. I want to push that left ridge line back in distance a little bit. And all I have is color with which to do that. I don't, I don't have any profound uh, linear perspective elements to work with here. I have to work with the uh, color and the color relationships. So, warmer colors <clears throat> in the foreground on the right side there cooler colors in the distance. So that's the game I'm playing. So I'm dealing with a lot of subtlety here in that landscape and I'm trying to establish just uh, some little ridge lines that was were occurring within that big ridge of of uh, mountain line there along the the where the where the rock outcropping meets it. This blue that I'm laying in is not actually as blue in reality. The video is ten, tending to make it appear blue, but it's more of a gray tone than one might initially think.
Sometimes I don't always show you my mixing process because of the time it takes, but an artist really does spend quite a bit of time mixing paint and trying to get the colors and the value values just right. And of course, I'm laying in some splatter there. Now, that little tree element that I put in right at the base of that rock outcropping those cliffs, that's going to become important later on. There's a kind of figure ground relationship happening in there. In fact, if you can call anything in my landscape paintings a figure, you can call the trees a figure if you wish. They are <clears throat> they have a figurative quality to me and they kind of serve that purpose. So I'm just going through the process of laying in um, paint textures according to what I'm seeing in the photograph and then uh, glazing over the top and then watching the mix of the two uh, sort of start telling the story of this landscape that exists here. Well okay I'm going to turn you over to the music now let you enjoy that for a little bit while the rest of the painting goes on. Okay, hope you enjoyed that little piece of music. So right now with my brush, I'm lifting out. I'm just with a little water in the brush rubbing the surface of the watercolor because it reconstitutes, it lifts out. But because I've got that acrylic yellow underneath, it'll never go to the white of the paper, but it will always remain that kind of yellow undertone. So I'm lifting out to create that ridge line, then I'm going to come back behind it and paint some darker elements behind to help establish the existence of that ridge line. And that's just all part of the, well, construction process, if you will, <laughs> of this painting. So I'm playing it in uh, real time. Um, not uh, speeding it up at all, just normal speed so you can get a sense of the thinking and the painting process of the artist and uh, real-time uh, depiction of how the process goes. And of course now we are now jumping to back to four times speed. Lifting out there 
and creating a little bit of a light area there as a focal point. So I'm trying to establish a relationship between that monolithic rock outcropping and then that little tree and the little light spot between them that's really trying to create a relationship. Um, yeah, between the two, that is my focal point. And everything else is uh, really kind of a supporting cast of characters, if you will. So I've put up the in the inset image in the upper left there, I put up there what the image looked like as I began this painting process for this video. So you can see where it was and where it is now and get a sense of how I was making my decisions through the process of making this painting, lifting out in spots, uh, darkening in other areas, and really bringing it to a more um, completed finish, if you will. There were some stands of burned uh, um, junipers that were uh, in the area. There had been a fire that had gone through there a year or two earlier, so I was able to pull those in and paint those, and they just kind of added to the overall flavor of this painting that I found myself depicting. Just continuing to further define and refine, lay in some strokes, come in with another brush and modify them back and forth, forth and back until the painting starts to feel finished. Well, okay. Hope you enjoyed watching the process of the making of this painting. And like I said before, you're always welcome to give these a try yourself and see what you can learn. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Have yourselves a good day.